This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a video host and producer, and so I'm really interested in photography and video. And our guest has written a brand new book. You can see it between us right now. His name is Santino Zaffirana. Did I get that halfway right? You did perfectly, Mark. All right. So we'll call him Santino. Okay. Uh, and he's written a book, Think Before You Shoot, uh, the art of taking creative photographs. And I know that we do a health show and every now and then we veer off, but I think taking photographs, looking at photographs, looking at photographs from your grandparents, your great grandparents is healthy. And Santino, welcome to the show. Would you agree with that? That looking at photographs can be a, a boost to your health? Absolutely. I, I think the medium of taking pictures is boost your health because it's a creative process. And you mentioned uh, in my book, I talk about when I was 10 years old, my uncle Salvatore Dolce introduced me to photography. And that's it, it was uh, he gave me when I turned 10, he gave me his brownie. Huh. And I just love looking through that camera because you had to look down into this a viewfinder, which was kind of a bubble, but it was so magical. And I think the same thing happens when we look at old photographs. Uh, we, like I look at old photographs now and it takes you back of a feeling what a human being has in their heart and their soul, you, you, it really reaches you. And that's what I try to do with the book is to try to, when people take photographs, is to make sure they have a feeling that they transmit visually to the viewer. I, I will have to get together. I have an old Yashica D twin rep. Uh, twin, yes, right? yes. I haven't used it in I, I, yeah. years, you know? Yeah. Um, the leather is still, the leather casing is still fresh. It's, uh, it's really, really kind of good. Um, how did you come up with this idea? I mean, everybody is yeah. is taking pictures now, um, uh, you, you know, on your on their iPhones, yeah, um, right. And, uh, and you and and snap you snap all the time. Yes, yes. Well, that's one of the things that I was conscious. Uh, like over fifteen years ago, I realized that we're clicking away like crazy, but really we're when we click away, we're not thinking about what we what's in front of us. And so that that's why I called the book Think Before You Shoot, because there are so many things that you have to look at. And what happens is psychologically, we take pictures, click, click, click away. Then we look at the pictures afterwards and we don't like them and we're cropping, we're saturating them, as I call the Instagram button, you know, that's yeah. contrast and and then what we're doing is reaffirming that we're bad photographers. No, it's not that you're a bad photographer. It's just that you've never learned the, the discipline and the tools and you're not thinking, you're just clicking. So if you could think a little bit and learn the tools, and that's what I did in the book. I made specifically this fine art book. It's never been done before where a fine art book and some technicals have been put in. The book is a 204 page book. So there's a lot of great photographs in there, but I put 21 techniques, 21 pages that are very, very simple. And I didn't wanna make it a technical book. So I simplified two paragraphs describing the technique, very simple, and you will get it. Cause I've done this a long time. Well, you've been teaching, I have to say, tell everybody you have a, a photography school in Los Angeles. And if people are interested, we'll have uh, we'll yeah, the yeah. website for that as well. Um, I, 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 wrote, I keep writing notes to myself here. Okay. Um, uh, one, you were recently featured in a photo exhibit in New York? No, I was at the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, the Museum of Modern Art picked up my book. They felt that the book had a lot to offer to their um, viewers and customers. And it, it was a privilege being there because as I stated before, is to be with other photographers for 150 years and have my book there it was a recognition 
Um, and and I, I made the book in such a way, even the way I started the book is very, after the first double page spread, the very next picture is a road. And I want to take people on a creative journey. And, and people who already bought the book are saying wonderful things about it. And it's a journey to undo the way you've been thinking about taking pictures. Because the beauty about photography is the proof is in the put it, right? Oh, your, yeah. Your, your pictures, either they improve or don't improve. So if you're still making the same mistakes over and over again, you're not getting better. So that's what the book is about, is to change that. Do people know if they're making a mistake? I mean, they can say, oh, that's a terrible picture. In my family, yeah. um, uh, I, I have a couple of photographic uh, stories. One is my mother would say, Mark, don't make a face, smile. I mean, constantly, right? Yes. Um, and so that's one. And yeah. then the other one is um, my mother-in-law would say, all right, let's get together. And it would be, you know, a group of people, sans me. I don't know if she was saying something or not, but I would take the picture. She would direct, okay? Right. And I, I never like, I don't like, you know, posed pictures. Correct. Right? I, right. You know, you get one or two of those but they're around the, you know, Easter dinner or Passover uh, Seder dinner, uh, which is coming up as we're doing our show here. Um, you get, you know, you get Uncle Billy who drank too much wine. Right, right. right? That's, yeah. that's what I would like. I, that's the kind of picture right. I like to take. Right. So there is candid photos and then there is uh, photos that someone, everybody wants to look good. Yeah. Right? But when you're uh, taking a candid photo, you have to um, know when to take it to to be able to talk to your um, talk to your subjects. Mm -hmm. So communication is very important. I say a good photographer is a director and photographer, because I'll give you a perfect example. I, I was in the fashion field in New York and you would think. Up when I hired a professional model, a model, sorry, uh, they're getting paid for it. Uh, but I constantly still had to say to them, "Oh, you look good. Turn over here. Beautiful, beautiful. Turn over here. You you see that in photo in pictures all the time." Yeah, she's getting paid a lot of money to do her job, but I still have to uh, get that emotion out of her that I want to see as the director or the photographer, what I think looks good that she's going to like, and the audience is going to like. So going back to the family, you kind of have to talk to them. And also you, do you sort of direct them, always say, look right into the camera and say, Hey, uncle, so-and-so, or, you know, aunt so-and-so remember this time, or look at what you're doing. And then they start laughing that's when you that's take the right. photograph. So it's, it is a communication you have to do. Right. And a lot of people are using their iPhones. I keep getting uh, 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 messages about uh, attachments for your iPhone. Okay. Yes. You can do wide and fish, fish eye, wide angle, uh, uh, even uh, micro or macro. So mm -hmm. um, we, I'm going to hold my iPhone up. Yes. I see a lot of people taking pictures like mm -hmm. this, and I hate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My medium TV is horizontal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Instagram, I think, is uh, wants it to be vertical. Correct. I hate that. I, it just yeah. it crops everything out. What do you think yeah. about that? Well, there's a section in the book. I actually that's very important. Uh, again, there's 21 techniques, uh, and that particular one is framing. Which way do you frame? So. The first thing you need to look at is no matter if it's an iPhone, because these techniques will work with no matter what uh, camera you have. Uh, so you look at the framing and I have some rules. So if it's a, if you're shooting one person, generally don't shoot them horizontally because you're going to have more space and that space will take away from the subject. Right. You don't place them too correctly. So an easy way to do it is just do a vertical shot and you eliminate that space. Now, let's say you want to take that horizontal shot. Okay. 
make sure that's why they, they have this thing called the rule of thirds. I, uh, I wrote which, that down too. Which uh, which is a, a, a top uh, technique in the book. I explain the rule of third and the rule of third. We take a lot. Photographers take a lot from painting. So Leonardo da Vinci was a master at the rule of thirds. It was yeah. even created, you know, he did the last supper in the rule of thirds. And so you place them a little bit over and you have two thirds of negative space, but you have to be conscious of that negative space and make sure that uh, the negative space is softer. So this way you run back to the positive space when you have that two thirds negative space. And I go through it in the book and it is very important placement and framing. Uh, our guest is the author of Think Before You Shoot. Uh, you can see a picture of the book between uh, uh, Santino uh, and myself, Santino uh, Zaffirana. And uh, with a career of more than a, 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 a quarter of a century, we'll say, uh, he has taken all kinds of great pictures. Tell us about the picture on the cover. Yes. Uh, we've got this man who's, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, uh, and you describe it in the book. Uh, you know, he's, he's holding, he's holding a camera in one hand and he's holding a cup of coffee and drinking it in the other. It looks like it was taken in, uh, in Memphis or downtown LA or, where was yeah, it? Yeah, it's a it's a busy street. It was actually taken on 34th Street uh near 8th Avenue in, in New York City. And if Got you know it. 34th Street, it's a very busy street. But when I first I was uh, basically waiting for a friend, um, and all of a sudden this gentleman with this camera, which is an old-fashioned camera, he basically converted into a Polaroid camera and he does street photography of you know, tourist, and he puts him in front of the Empire State Building, takes a picture, charges him 20 bucks for the Polaroid. But when he sat down, I took a nice portrait, and he was giving me a really hard look, like he was like, oh, don't take my portrait. You know, I've traveled around the world, that doesn't bother me. So I take a nice picture of him, but I wasn't satisfied. Why? Because it's a nice portrait, but I wanted more than that. And I am very in tune, which I talk about in the book, you always have to transmit a feeling from your photograph. So what the feeling that I wanted to transfer was, here is a street scene, very busy. I needed people in front of him and I needed to slow it down. And we talk about speed uh, simplified. So I basically slowed my shutter speed down, which I get into the book very simply. And I used, framed him basically with the people that passed by. And I showed him the photograph a year later, I came back to New York and I gave him a picture of it and he just loved it. He just said, you know, I showed him both. It's just, just the portrait. Sure. And when you add the, the people in front to frame it, and again, it's a technique, it's called frame within a frame, which I talk about. Uh, what about, you know, uh, they, they say um, fix it in post is a very common expression in, in video production. Yeah. Um, don't worry about it. We'll fix it later is basically yeah. what it means. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe in Photoshop? I, I believe in uh, post-production adjustments, but not heavily and not overly done. So the one thing that the new uh, camera phones have done is, is to make it accessible to everybody to take a picture. We take... Now, more pictures than ever before in history, but right. we also take more bad pictures now than any time in history. So that was part of the whole book is to change that attitude and to show people how to do it, no matter if they have a camera phone or DSLR, you have to understand certain techniques with any discipline. And again, I try to make it as simple as possible, but I think camera phones, what they've done is giving you a good exposure where well, we used to have a problem before that. So we get a better exposure now, but that's just the beginning of making a great photograph, you know, placement, light in. So uh, yeah, I think camera phones are great. And in post-production, minimize as much as you can. Uh, there's never been in photography, and I know in post and film, you always wanna make it look the best as possible. 
So, but you don't want to overdo it because then it becomes a little phony. And, and a, per, a perfect example of that is like, we have now these screens, our TVs that are so sharp that um, uh, like uh, Avatar, when Cameron did his yes. Avatar, he learned that he first started shooting and the depth of field, the softness, everything was so sharp, it was making people sick actually when they were looking at the movie. So you, I, I wanna make sure with technology and post-production like Photoshop, we minimize. So if we get a good, and it starts with lighting, Right. And that's why, you know, as you, your audience can see right now, I just have a window light right now, which we talk about in the book. A window light or door light is beautiful light and people don't even pay attention to it. And I'm using window light as well. I mm -hmm. have my overheads on as well. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is I blurred my background, which mm -hmm. is something that we're doing this on Zoom, sure. uh, which you can do. But I have a, a lens that if I'm doing an interview and I want it to be an intimate interview and I want the, the subject to be front and center, using the rule of thirds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I position the, 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 the guest, the subject, and then I can sharp focus on them, but blur the background using the depth, sure. uh, using the depth sure. of field. Yeah, and and one of the other things is we we we've got to wrap up here um, is aesthetic, okay? Uh, everybody has their own aesthetic, even if you don't know what that means, you have one. It's uh, and it's not something that if you cut yourself shaving, you don't use an aesthetic pencil. That's a different kind of thing. Yes, um, I don't like I I like unbalanced. Okay, it's just what I, I prefer. Yeah. So um, I may have somebody off to the left or to the right mm -hmm. on a video, right. leaving blank space there. But because of a lot of what I do, I'm on, I may want words to appear on the side. Right. Correct. Um, uh, can you talk about aesthetic? Sure, sure, Everybody's absolutely. Aesthetic? So you started off with placement or framing. And what I usually tell our students and I get into in the book, sort of the kiss of death is to put somebody right in the middle. Yeah. Why? We have two negative spaces that will outweigh your positive space. So we don't want to do that. So a simple way, generally, unless you're forced to shoot, like you're saying, for TV and then you're horizontal, it is better to push them over to the one side or the other and make sure you like you have on your screen right now, you soften the background up. And this way that two thirds negative space is so soft and subtle, you run to the positive space, which is the subject matter. Right. And you kind of bounce back and forth. And what we want to do is to make sure our eye um, sort of, moves around the screen. It's like a painting. You could tell when someone goes to a gallery or a museum, how fast they move through the different uh, visual right. medium. If they're moving really fast, the artist wasn't as successful in my opinion. Got so it. we want them, uh, so in that case, to make sure that you framing is so important and composition is important. So uh, the aesthetics, I mean, I could get into the aesthetics you know, I could define aesthetics or fine art. What is a fine art photograph that people attract to? But maybe on another program. <laughs> on another <laughs> time. Uh, I, I have to tell you that uh, Santino and I have never met. And as soon as we met, we clicked. I mean, and, and talked yeah. for 15, 20 minutes before we started our, our interview. Uh, the name of the book is Think Before You Shoot. And if you're into photography at all or just want to look at some really wonderful photographs. This is a book for you. Um, it's available, I know, on Amazon. Uh, where else? Uh, every, uh, local bookstores have it. Uh, Bonds and Nobles has it. Uh, any fine art gift store. It's become a great gift book. The largest gift distributor just picked it up, uh, Stephen Young, which they handle the whole Southwest for any gift stores that you go into will have my book. This is, it's really terrific. Now we're going to have Santino back on our sister program. This is Late Night Health. We're going to have him 
uh, cook with us on Mark Allen Cooks Your Dinner. So uh, that'll be happening sometime in uh, late April, early May. We'll figure out a date and I'll let everybody know. Santina, will you come back and talk sometime? And you're going away for two months. When you come back, uh, we'll do this again. You'll tell us about the health in Europe. Absolutely. I'm glad to have back. And if you're, you're, if you ever have any questions or your audience have any questions, they could uh, uh, reach me at uh, santino.thinkbeforeyoushoot on Facebook or Instagram. That's santino. at thinkbeforeyoushoot. Terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, you, well, Mark. that wraps up this edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. Thanks for watching.